Good evening, Todds and Vixens. My name is Xbox One, and welcome back to some more Mass Effect 1. Last we left off, we finally made it to Peak 15, and we're about to uncover some of the mysteries that's been going on. Um, from what we've gathered... From what we've gathered, uh, Matriarch Benezia is here, and there seems to be a... some kind of hostile contain... Uh, Containment? Ah, right here! There seems to be some kind of odd hostile containment that is causing problems. The door could be finessed. It appears that the trams to the subsidiary stations are beyond it. Oh, good observation, folks. Right. And yeah, everything doesn't seem to be in working function. Um, we had to repair some of the station AI Mira's um, functions before even coming here. The control group loosened the They're in. Can't escape. Up the tunnels now. We're sorry. The leads couldn't get to the struck. Without why you can. He killed himself because he was part of whatever happened here. Among my people, a suicide's body would be left for scavengers. The Nathak will get to him eventually. The Nathak, huh? Oh, some... Well, some people do find guilt whenever they're a part of something that uh, costs the lives of other people. And there we go! And there's slight, one slight headache that's out of the way. Oh! Don't worry, Rex is a, is a strong cookie. He'll be fine. <clears throat> so how's everyone's night been? Been mostly a lazy day for me, to be honest. Oh god, it's built right into the ice, so this must be cold. Like, cold, cold. Alright, let's get to the rift station. Departing central station. Destination, Rift Station. Oh, so we're just going to stand back to back, guys? Now arriving at Rift Station, binary... Oh, now we're facing the same direction. And that must be the labs. Oh, emergency exit only. Okay. Well, if this isn't an emergency, I don't know what is. Again, to the hot labs. Okay, so the elevator's locked down. on the tram you're not suggesting that they can actually run the tram are you can those things work a trains controls hell if I know I'm not assuming any goddamn thing look you're human and that's enough that I won't shoot I'd like to know who you are special types and same reconnaissance my name is Shepard I'm a specter huh I won't look a heavily armed horse in the mouth the aliens overran the hot labs last week only Han Olar got out and he ain't all there anymore 
First, we knew the bastards were clawing into my command post. We had a lot more staff then. Well, I think you guys did a good job, all things considering. You were taken by surprise and had civilians to protect. You did a good job, Captain. Yeah? Sure as hell doesn't feel like it. The board sent an Asari to clean up the mess. She went to the hot labs yesterday. We haven't heard from her since. Well, maybe I can help. I'm not gonna let any of your people die. All I can do is hold out here and protect the civilians. There's an emergency elevator out by the trams. This card will let you activate it. It can take you down to the hot labs. Oh, and if you need any first aid, Dr. Cohen's downstairs in the med bay. Uh, let's talk about these aliens first of all. What can you tell me about the aliens? Ask Dr. Olar. He's the only one who made it out of the hot labs. It's the only Volus left in here. And anything about Benezia? You're certain the Matriarch is still in the hot labs. She hasn't come back here. You came through Central Station, so she ain't there. And these things also came from the labs. Did the aliens come from inside the facility, or did they attack from outside? You want my personal opinion? Labs like that exist to do stupid crap that gets people killed. Anything about the facility that I should know about? Tell me about the structure of the hot labs. It's built into one of the glaciers further down the mountain. Real old, thick, stable one. Something goes wrong, they heat it up and sink it into the ice. Normally, the crew gets to the labs using a tram from Central Station. We've got an elevator that connects directly, but it's for emergency use only. Uh, listen. I'm not sending my people down there. It's too dangerous. You understand? I understand. <clears throat> well, tell me about the people. How are your people holding up? We weren't expecting the initial wave. They made it inside. We lost some good people. Those of us left are short-handed. We've kept order by long shifts and stems. I don't like it, but I don't see an alternative. I think that's enough questions for now. I've got work to do. Yeah, I hear that. Hell! Man the perimeter! So that's how it's supposed to go down. Thanks for the help. Every few hours, a group comes up the tram tunnel. It's actually better since we locked down the elevator. I'll do whatever I can. I don't know why they keep throwing themselves against our defenses. Even animals should learn not to stick their noses where it hurts. All right, so that happened. Nothing new here. Hey, Alessia. Uh, La uh, Lalis? What? You seem less upset at this situation than the others. That is one of the virtues of the meditation you interrupted. Sorry. Tell me about yourself. I am Alestia Ialis from the University of Arraeus. Is there anything in particular you want to know, or should I just spout random facts? Did I interrupt something? I was meditating. I suppose to a species as brash as yours, it would appear to be inattention. You're a member of the science teams? Recently transferred, yes. Hmm. What do you do here? Molecular genetics. I specialize in biotic-enhanced allele-specific hybridization. Uh, you kind of lost me on molecular genetics. That's a bit technical for me. I am very good at tracking inherited variations in genetic sequences. I'm sure you would find it quite dull. Well, since you're in Asari... Do you know Matriarch Benezia? Why ask me, and not your friend? Because I do not know anything about the Matriarch. Then why would I? That's all for now. Then I will return to my meditations. Right. Chipper person. Uh, hello, Pitozzi. Uncertain. I welcome you. Cautiously. 
I am curious to know what you're doing here. I came to help. I heard there were some problems up here. Furtively. I am concerned about the state of our guards. Many have been awake for days. For now, with forced cheer, I still have a limited supply of equipment to sell. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Let's have a look. Regretfully, most of my stock is being appropriated by Captain Ventralis. <laughs> I'm sure you still have some stuff. Unfortunately, you sell the pink armor. I don't like the pink armor. But I will take your sort of foundations. Yeah, unfortunately, all of your stuff isn't exactly that great. Uh. The tech cooldown is a nice little, uh, nice little thing, but what I got on is. I guess more useful. You do have Titan Armor for Turians, so I'm kind of curious. I'll get that for now. Probably didn't need to. Probably just wasted a lot of money, but hey. What? No! Oh, you good, man? <sighs> Sorry. I haven't had much sleep since the attack. Yeah. Is there something you need? Um, the situation. How are you holding up? It would be petty to complain after showering off a co-worker's brain. None of us have had enough sleep since the attack. Of course, not all of us have guns. What do you do here? I'm a toxicologist. I can't talk about my work. Not that I'm doing anything since the accident. There was an accident here? I can't talk about what happened. Not here. Too public. Talk to Dr. Cohen in the medical ward. He was the project lead. Huh. What do you know about the hot labs? Nothing. I didn't work there. As far as I know, Han Olar was the only survivor. Han Olar, that sounds like a Volus. Is he in the medical ward? No, he's staying in the science team's quarters. Be gentle with him. He had a trying experience. What sort of work do you do here? I can't say. I signed a non-disclosure agreement. If we survive, I'd like to keep my job. The location is terrible, but the pay is better than any other commercial lab. You're not happy on Peak 15? The outside world doesn't exist here. Just walls of ice and rock. There's only the work, the discovery. It's easy to forget why science is guided by ethics. Maybe we're paying for that now. I'm looking for an Asari. Asari? Well, there's Dr. Ayalis over there. There's also our guest, Lady Benezia. Captain Ventralis might know where she is. I'll talk to you later. Remember to report any suspicious noises. Uh, that's restricted area. That doesn't sound very good to go to. You're the one that he was talking about, the Solarian. What? What, what do you want? I didn't mean to bother you. No, you did nothing wrong. I'm just distracted. What happened to these people? They're suffering from a toxin. There was an accident. I have a non-disclosure agreement. I shouldn't discuss it with anyone outside of the company. But I can help. But you're going to, because I might be able to help. I'd like to think that the company finds our lives more valuable than their secrets. You know Mira, the VI for Peak 15? She handles the safety protocols for our experiments here. Yeah, I brought her back online. We reactivated her on our way through Central Station. That was you? I'm grateful. Until she came online, the automatic equipment wouldn't work. We lost the connection to Mira in the middle of an experiment and the quarantine failed. These three were exposed to a toxin, something we were working on. A toxin, huh? Well, I need more information. I understand your caution, but I need details. What you say won't go beyond these walls. It's a bioweapon. Based on an exotic life form discovered on the frontier. They wanted something that could kill the creature. But there was no profit in something that kills one species on the frontier. We kept working on it and adapted it to affect more species. Thoros B is highly infectious, but can't pass from one person to another. Like a bio-war attack without a pandemic spread. Do you imagine that distinction makes this ethical? Militaries 
governments. They'll get this kind of weapon one way or another, and we're trying to limit the damage. I know you can't see that. Yeah, I really can't. There's a reason the Citadel Conventions forbid bioweapons, Doctor. I didn't expect you'd understand. Our notes and equipment are locked in the quarantine labs. Captain Ventralis doesn't want to risk more contamination. Is there a chance that I could get infected with this biovirus? Is he right to keep people out? No, the toxin has a brief period of viability. After that, it breaks down into simple protein chains. But he won't listen to me. Oh, listen to me. I'll talk to him. Maybe I can convince him to let me try. I can't ask you to do this officially, but if you can do anything, I'd appreciate it. Talk to you later. I hope you can do something. You and me both. Alright, so let's go talk to Captain... Captain Ventralis. Something you need? Yeah, I'm gonna help Dr. Corrin. I've heard about the problems in the quarantine lab. I'd like to recover the toxin cure. God, I wish we could help those guys. I really do, but we can't risk contamination now. But I can. We're not part of your defense plans. We're consuming extra rations, extra metagel, yeah, but you also have extra guns. All right, you want to gamble with your life, you're not under my command. I'll have the guard let you in, but he'll lock the door behind you. He'll run a full scan before he'll let you out. If there are any anomalies, you stay in there. That's fair. Those are reasonable precautions. I'll radio ahead to let the guard know. Good luck. I've got work to do. You and me both. You're a good man, Ventralis. We'll try to get out of this alive, all of us. So unfortunately, there's a lot more running back and forth, but uh, we'll get into the needy-gritty action in a little bit. Meantime, I've been uh, trying to build up my community a little bit more, been getting more active on Twitter, um, and I'm even trying to make a little trailer video or introduction video to my YouTube channel. I still don't know how I'm gonna do that. I did write a short script about it, but uh, nothing to send stone. Um, I might do clips from my streams and just piece it in, uh, piece it onto one video, but that's gonna take a lot of time and dedication, which I'm, uh, which I'm willing to do. Positive. I'm positive. <laughs> Just shut up. God. You know, in times of extreme stress, I can understand people trying to line the mood with a little bit of humor. You know, and I think it is mostly just human nature to do that. And I'm sure the Turian probably doesn't understand that. He probably just thinks that the human's being an insensitive asshole. Or maybe not. Maybe the Turian can understand that. But, hey. Jokes aren't always the best precaution. Hey, Hanno Lar, you are a Volus. So you are the one who experienced the creatures. You came to find out about them, didn't you? You mean those things out there? Yes. I'm the only survivor from the hot lab, you know? Well then, tell me about these aliens. I need to know more about those things out there. About the Rachni? Rachni? That's preposterous. That doesn't sound familiar. Where did they come from? They found it in a derelict ship. An egg. Waiting since the last battles. They brought it here. Shut up! God, you want to get us killed? I don't oh yeah, non-disclosure. Control over who lives or dies here. Do you? If you're gonna be crazy, be the quiet kind. 
crazy. Also, that's a bare faced Turian, sane. I just realized that. God, am I sane. Well, then tell me about these Ragnai. I need to know everything about the Ragnai. I told you all I can. We brought the Ragnai back from the dead. In retrospect, a bad decision. You don't say. And how'd you come out of this alive? I heard you were at the hot labs. How did you make it out alive? I killed her. Who? Doctors on Mua. We were going to lunch when the alarms went off. I ran into the tram and I closed the doors. She banged on the window once, then they sliced her to pieces. Her head came apart like a melon. I closed the door. I killed her. Tell me what you know. I'll make your survival mean something. You think I want absolution? There is none. Could Matriarch Benezia survive in the hot labs? It's possible. The specimens were sensitive to biotics. All right. I'll be leaving now. Yeah. Oh, no, no. He has. He actually does have facial markings. It's just kind of hard to tell. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm standing really close to you, sir, and I do apologize. But no, um, the undersides of his eyes, all of his mandibles, his nose, pretty much the... From the eyes down, is covered in like a brown, uh, brown coloring. So yeah, he isn't a bear face. I don't know why I thought about that. Oh yeah, bear face Turians are considered. Um, oh no, I don't want to go here. They're considered um, non-trustworthy in the Turian culture. So if you see a Turian without face markings, uh, probably can't be trusted. Yeah, he has the exact same markings as his guard. You're not part of the crew. They probably hail from the same, um, from the same colony. I have Ventralis's permission to go in there. Yeah, he radioed. He also said you have to prove you're not contaminated to get out. You got a death wish? You should stand watches on the barricade. So let's read these notes. We've isolated four chemicals that can be combined to contract, uh, con counteract the toxins. God, English major that can't speak English. They must be mixed in precise quantities. As each chemical is poured, the equipment will mark the minimum and maximum amount that will work. Too little or too much will spoil the result. Okay. Let's do this. Bop. 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 Oh, I did it. First try. Your mission ends here, Shepard. We'll see about that, bitch. <laughs> I love... <laughs> I love Rex. What happened to Ventralis' man? I didn't have permission to come in. He got in my way. I was ordered to eliminate you should the opportunity arise. And here you are, trapped in this lab. Weapons free! Alright, so Rex. Yeah, sorry, but he kept getting in my way. We'll see about that, bitch. <laughs> Oh, Rex, you, you proved to me why it's always a good idea to take you places. Ah, damn it. God damn it. Mm. Just getting extra stuff to either sell or use. Most likely sell. And nothing else. Uh. 
Ah, oh, you poor bastard. They came out of there. You mean the Geth? The inorganics the Asari had with her. Benezia brought them with her. Then I need to go there. How can I get into the maintenance area? A team lead would have access. Like Dr. Cohen. He's in the medical bay. I'll be leaving now. Also, I really do like the fact that um, Shepard kind of like stopped himself from saying, you know, the, the G word, Geth. Because uh, if he hadn't, it could actually do a uh, station wide panic. This way. Is it this way? No, I just came from that way, didn't I? I'm sorry, I'm all turned around. Right down here, down here. Hey, I got the cure. Is that the cure? You did it? Yep. That Asari scientist, the one in the mess hall, she just tried to kill us. Alestia? That's unbelievable. Well, I... I, uh, I don't know much about her. She arrived a month ago. One of the shareholders pulled strings to get her here. Let me guess. Saren the Spectre. Yes. I think that was the name. I, I don't pay attention to the other research teams. Look. The guards? They've been more on edge since you got here. I think they were expecting you. And there are more labs in the back. The guards won't even let me back there. Just people with clearance. And you're gonna give me clearance. What about the maintenance area? Do you have access to that? The maintenance area? Yes. Take my pass. But there's just snow back there. Let me see that file. An extension on Phelps' work? I thought he was on the right track. I can't thank you enough that... Oh, God, what a cliché. You saved their lives, do you know that? Yeah, but I kind of need a bit of a bigger reward. Could you spare a few medical packs? They're worth their weight in gold up here. You didn't get these from me. Ventrolis wanted them saved for his people. I need to administer this. Thanks again. Because I'm pretty sure if I go a certain route, um, the guards will have orders to kill me, or try to kill me. And it'll just lead to the death of so many innocents. So we're going to take the less direct route, which, in granted, it's a little bit longer, but it's not really that much longer. You know, it's pretty much going the Paragon route, which is a little bit out of the way, or going the Renegade route, which is more direct. Like this right here, maintenance area, that's the Paragon way. Um, the other way was up there. It was when you saw the turrets. That was a more direct way. If I go into the hot labs before dealing with Benezia, then yeah, they would have gotten orders to attack me. Um... Because I remember uh, Ventralis uh, gave me his pass to go down to the hot labs, which I would um, I would activate something called I would activate something, and it'll purge pretty much purge the uh, the, the labs of all the uh, of all the containments. But when I came back, he'll try to attack me. 
because he got word from Venezia or Saren or one of the two. Matriarch Venezia, we meet at last. You do not know the privilege of being a mother. There is power in creation. To shape a life, turn it toward happiness or despair. Her children were to be ours, raised to hunt and slay Saren's enemies. I won't be moved by sympathy, no matter who you bring into this confrontation. Liara's here because she wants to be, not because I asked her to. Indeed. What have you told him about me, Liara? What could I say, Mother? That you're insane? Evil? Should I explain how to kill you? What could I say? Have you faced an Asari commando unit before? Few humans have. I can't believe you'd kill your own daughter. I now realize I should have been stripped of her. So yeah, she puts me in stasis, releases the commandos. But as soon, but yeah, I'm not even, no longer in stasis. Oh yeah, in her original, or in the original game, uh, there is no giant stasis bubble like that, and there's no, um, there's no stasis bubble, and there's barely any cover, so this fight was a lot harder. But they really did fix up in the remake. The remake. My first, uh, my first time really playing as an infiltrator. So uh, I usually fight her as a biotic. That's coming right for me. Hard difficulty, right? No, not graphics. Uh, it's gameplay. No, no, please, God, no. Yeah, I'm on. Okay, I'm on veteran. Um, I have been playing on insanity mode with my other shepherds, but I wanted to make sure I got. I wanted to give um, veteran a try too, but I do have um, other shepherds that are on insanity. This is not over. Saren is unstoppable. My mind is filled with his light. Everything is clear. Hmm. The Rachni didn't cooperate with you. Why should I? I will not betray him. You will. You... You must listen. Saren still whispers in my mind. I can fight his compulsions briefly, but the indoctrination is strong. Why are you able to break free of his control now? I sealed a part of my mind away from the indoctrination, saving it for a moment when I could help destroy him. It will not last long. The Asari have really unique mental abilities that I cannot begin to comprehend. So you could turn on me again? Yes, but it would not be my will, Shepard. People are not themselves around Saren. You come to idolize him, worship him. You would do anything for him. The key is Sovereign, his flagship. It is a dreadnought of incredible size, and its power is extraordinary. Sovereign's not like other ships. Where did it come from? I cannot say. The Geth did not build it. Its technology is far more advanced than that of any known species. 
The longer you stay aboard, the more Saren's will seems correct. You sit at his feet and smile as his words pour into you. It is subtle at first. I thought I was strong enough to resist. Instead, I became a willing tool, eager to serve. He sent me here to find the location of the Mew Relay. Its position was lost thousands of years ago. How does something that big go missing? 4,000 years ago, a star nearby went supernova. The shockwave propelled the relay out of its system, but did not damage it. Its precise vector and speed are impossible to determine. As millennia passed, the nebula created by the nova enveloped the relay. It is difficult to find any cold object in interstellar space, particularly something swathed in hot dust and radiation. Someone on Noveria found it? 2,000 years ago, the Rachni inhabited that region of our galaxy. They discovered the relay. The Rachni can share memories across generations. Queens inherit the knowledge of their mothers. I took the location of the relay from the Queen's mind. I was not gentle. How did the Rachni find it? They searched, patiently. They are territorial creatures, driven to close any possible way into their systems. So I take it that uh, since the Mu Rayleigh system Star One Supernova, the recognized homeworld is no longer really there. Why does Saren need the Mu Relay? He believes it will lead him to the Conduit. I would tell you more if I could, but Saren did not share his counsel with me. I was merely a servant to his cause. You can still make it right. Give me the information. I was not myself, but I should have been stronger. I transcribed the data to an OSD. Take it, please. Knowing the Relay's coordinates is not enough. Do you know where he planned to go from there? Saren wouldn't tell me his destination. But you must find out quickly. I transmitted the coordinates to him before you arrived. You have to stop me. I, I can't. His teeth are at my ear. Fingers on my spine. You sh you should. Oh, you should. Mother, I don't leave. Fight him. You've always made me proud, Liara. Die. Hey, Liara, can you uh, use lift? Rex, use that. And why not? I cannot go on. You will have to stop him, Shepard. Hold on. We've got Medijal. Maybe we can. No. He is still in my mind. I am not entirely myself. I never will be again. Mother, good night, little wing. I will see you again with the dawn. No light. They always said there would be a... <sighs> Fortunately, that happens. And lifting Liara's uh, mother into the air uh, with using Liara, I actually learned that little um, that little thing from a YouTuber by the name of Kevduit. Um, he actually has this really funny series uh, where he plays video games, but he plays as a complete psychopath, and I would highly recommend them if you ever have a chance to. And I think that's hilarious. That's a pretty much an infant uh, channel me is shouting out a much larger channel but hey even if I bring one person to you know his channel you know it's worth it he's a really funny dude he's um he's got a really hyped up energy and it's just like I feel like if you were hanging out with him he'd be that one guy that you always have to watch what he's doing because you know it's gonna be hilarious but it also gets you in trouble 
Oh yeah, necromancy. That's another joke that he made. I need to stop stealing jokes. I feel horrible. This one serves as our voice. We cannot sing. Not in these low spaces. Your musics are colorless. Yeah, I don't understand. Musics? What? Your way of communicating is strange. Flat. It does not color the air. When we speak, one moves all. This is going to be a fun conversation. <laughs> We are the mother. We sing for those left behind. The children you thought silenced. We are Rachni. How are you speaking through her? Our kind sing through touchings of thought. We pluck the strings and the other understands. She is weak to urging. She has colors we have no names for. But she is ending. Her music is bittersweet. It is beautiful. The children we birthed were stolen from us before they could learn to sing. They are lost to silence. End their suffering. They cannot be saved. They will only cause harm as they are. But what's wrong with them? I don't understand. Why are your children killing people? These needlemen. They stole our eggs from us. They sought to turn our children into beasts of war. Claws with no songs of their own. Our elders are comfortable with silence. Children know only fear if no one sings to them. Fear has shattered their minds. I understand. A child left alone in a closet until she is 16 would not be sane. If you're sure they can't be saved. It is lamentable, but necessary. Do what you must. Before you deal with our children, we stand before you. What will you sing? Will you release us? Are we to fade away once more? There are acid tanks rigged up on that thing. Set them off. Millions of my ancestors died to put these things down. Don't let them come back. They made a mistake. They let the Krogan go too far. This is a chance for us to atone. She has done nothing to us. Your companions hear the truth. You have the power to free us. Or return our people to the silence of memory. If I let you live, would you attack other races again? No. We... I... do not know what happened in the war. We only heard discordance, songs the color of oily shadows. We would seek a hidden place to teach our children harmony. If they understand, perhaps we would return. Are you a survivor from the war? A clone? We do not know. We were only an egg, hearing mother cry in our dreams. A tone from space hushed one voice after another. It forced the singers to resonate with its own sour yellow note. Then we awoke in this place, the last echo of those who came out from the singing planet. The sky is silent. I won't destroy your entire race. You'll go free. Are you stupid? Your people didn't fight these bastards. So maybe you don't get it. <laughs> Sorry, Rex. Are we any better if we kill them all? Do what you want. My people will clean up this mess later, just like we did for the Solarians. You... Will give us the chance to compose anew? We will remember. We will sing of your forgiveness to our children. Great. Bugs are writing songs about you. Mark my words, you'll regret this. 
I'm sorry, Rex. I always do feel bad for doing this whenever Rex is like, you really shouldn't. He's lived a big, long life. So the missions... The mission's almost over. Now... What is hostile with me? Anyway, now we gotta go to the hot labs. I'm not 100% sure, but I think you could have just left at uh, left it at that and just left the labs you know undisturbed I mean you technically all you had to do was just kill oh I don't remember that bit of detail I don't remember that at all but yeah I think you could have left at that because your mission was technically just deal with uh, Benezia and then leave are you here to secure the situation how are you holding up you must listen to me if we do not contain our mistake they will drop bombs from the battle stations. You understand? You let these things out? Uh, I am only following the orders. Binary Helix found an egg. It was on a derelict ship, thousands of years drifting. This was Rachni's ship. Inside they find many eggs in cryogenic suspension. A thousand-year-old egg hatched? Yes. Very tough to be so long frozen. That it survived the centuries, this is miraculous. Binary Helix planned to clone Rachni, mass produce them, create an army. But when they get here, they find this egg is not a common Rachni, it is a queen. After she lays eggs, they move her to Rift Station. They are thinking that without her, they can raise the babies to be obedient. I'm no biologist, but I'm pretty sure. You need a male and a female to make an egg. Hold on. Don't you need a male to get eggs? Queens are born carrying the genetic code of their fathers. Eggs are carried away from the colony to hatch alone. Queens can lay eggs in hours and have a colony in days. This is how they spread so quickly. Huh, okay. Separating them from their mother didn't work. This was exactly the wrong thing to do. I am thinking that without a queen, Rachni do not develop properly. Her mind is shaping theirs. These Rachni are uncontrollable. Then all we need to do is bring her here. No, I am sorry, but this will not work. These Rachni are beyond saving. It is a sad thing, but they must be euthanized. <laughs> I am thinking that the Neutron Purge must be set off. I'm not familiar with the Purge system. It creates bursts of Neutron radiation. Kills everything within the station. Things beyond get genetic damage of varying degree. How do we set off the Purge? Arming controls are nearby. All you do is insert the key. Then uh, I will give Tierra the restart. <laughs> to the facility and I'm at your disposal. You know what, let's uh let's just initiate Activate the, the neutron purge. 
I'm sorry, but I can't do that without proper code authorization. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I have to do this option just once. Uh, sick Semper Terra. <coughs> that is not the correct code. Please report to security for arrest and interrogation. Oh, that's awesome. Activate the Neutron Purge. I'm sorry, but I can't do that without proper code authorization. Code authorization. Code input, 875-020-079. Code Omega, local execution. Verify, code Omega execution in 120 seconds. So what you're saying is run like hell. Come on, people, let's go, let's go, let's go! Elevator. Yeah, playing as a biotic makes that part a lot easier because, um... You can either throw down a singularity or... Th use throw... Well, if I use throw... If Shepard use throw and Liara can use throw, then, you know, you essentially throw the beast out of the way. But other than that, it's difficult. All right, and we can now leave. Is no one going to fill this awkward silence? No? Okay, off we go. What's our next move, Commander? Head for the Mew Relay? Nope. The Mew Relay could link to dozens of systems. Unless we know exactly where Saren's going, we'd just be wasting our time. The Commander is right. We cannot rush off blind. We still need to learn more about Saren. Who put you in charge? Did the Commander resign when I wasn't looking? Ashley. We're all on the same team here, Williams. She's just trying to help. Sorry, Commander. This is a tough mission. We're all on edge. Everyone go get some rest. Crew, dismissed. Novaria report is away, Commander. You want me to patch it through to the Council? Patch him through, Joker. Setting up the link now, Commander. Is this report accurate, Commander? You found Rachni on Novaria? And then release the Queen. Do you have any idea what you've done? How many generations- First two games, I kind of hate you. Because you just always have something to say against me. Because even if I annihilated the uh, the, if, even if I annihilated them, you would still say like you know, you would still say was causing genetic ge um, genetic uh, genocide really worth it, Commander? So yeah, but I understand your concerns. We're gonna let it go. We're gonna breathe. This queen is different. She understands why her kind had to be wiped out last time around. I hope you're right, Shepard. Our children's children will pay the price if you're not. We'll be waiting for your next report, Commander. Miss Williams, Commander, we need to talk. If we do not resolve this situation now, I am afraid things might become... Oh! Oh, it's this scene! Oh, awkward, huh? It's this scene! I hope we can keep this civilized. I do not want this This is my first time ever getting this scene. Because it's been so pleasant between us lately. Look, somebody in this room needs to make a choice. It ain't me, and it ain't you. Okay, so I have never done... Because usually if I'm doing a romance, I always go for one person. Just, you know, because that's how it should be, you know? Don't... Uh, I... Eh. <laughs> Oh, I knew this would happen. I should have seen this coming. <laughs> I am afraid it was inevitable. I may not know much about human relationships, but I understand the concept of jealousy. Jealous? Of you? You're not even our species. Perhaps that is why you feel threatened. I am a rival unlike any you have faced before. Hostility is a common reaction to the unfamiliar. Doctor, you keep smart-assing me? I'll show you what my hostile reaction is like. Come on, we're all adults. Both of you. Settle down. We can handle this like mature adults. This is stupid. We're not married, Shepard. You want to get involved with some alien? Go ahead. It's none of my business. <laughs> can I have you both? 
Um, I've never had this scene, but I I know that Ashley does not go for that, and Liara will will technically you know she'll she pretty much just no Ashley, no Ashley, yes Ashley. You're special to me, Ash. Yeah, kind of hard to feel special while you're always chatting with your little blue friend on the side. Or is that my role? This is exactly what I was trying to avoid. I never should have told you of my feelings, Shepard. I have put you in a terrible position. I am sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry too, Liara. You're such a sweet character, and if it was any other male Shepard, I promise you, you'd be the main squeeze. But I've never romanced Ashley, and this is my time. I never meant for you to get hurt, but Ash is the one I really care about. I understand, Commander. Perhaps it is for the best. She is one of your own kind. I am sure you and Miss Williams will be very happy. I should... go. I need to... check on something. Oh, Dear God, I think I actually feel sorry for her. That's a surprise. A second ago you seemed ready to break her neck. Or yours. No one likes to feel like they're not good enough to get what they want. Let's not talk about this here. It's not really the right setting for intimate conversation. You know where to find me. <laughs> I feel so bad. Um, I really hate... I really hate that. I feel so bad. I feel bad for Liara. But yeah, the very first Mel Shepard I ever created uh, did romance Liara, and she is such a sweet character. And, okay, so 90% of the time when I'm playing Mass Effect, it's always as a Fem Shep. And of that 90%, or of that 90%, the other 90%, um, of that 90% of Fem Sheps, most of the time I'm romancing Garrus, so I don't even romance anyone in Mass Effect 1. Um... And then that 10% when I'm playing as Mel Shep, it's usually Liara, because, I don't know, I'm, I'm drawn to her. She's such an innocent character. But I do like Ashley's character, because you... Okay, so the way that I... The way that I work as Fem Shep when I'm trying not to romance anyone, because I didn't know this... There's a way to cancel Cadence, um, romance chain. But the easiest way for me was just to nuke him on... Nuke him in a later mission. But... I figured out a way against that, and now we're going to talk to Ashley. Hey, Skipper. Any interest in a small drink? It's a special occasion. That's contraband. What's the occasion? What's the occasion? It's Armistice Day, when the first contact war ended. My family always marks it. Since I'm the only Williams aboard, I thought I'd ask you. Seems like an odd thing to celebrate. That was 26 years ago. In our family, it's not really a celebration, more like an obligation. Don't tell me you don't know about my family. My commanders always find out. It's not in my files or something? There's almost nothing in your files. Technical scores and a list of crap assignments. There's a reason for the crap assignments. I'm General William's granddaughter, the commander of the Shanxi garrison in the war. The only human ever to surrender to an alien race and now it all makes sense. I see. That's why you drive yourself so hard. A Williams has to be better than the best, if only to avoid suspicion. That's what my dad told me the night before he retired. It takes a special kind of thick-headed to march into a job where your family's blacklisted. I did it anyway. I'm not gonna let our name go down with Arnold and Quisling. Granddad deserved better than that. I should have figured this out myself. I don't know how I can help you, though. Look at who I am, Shepard. Do you ever hear me ask for help? It's not that bad things don't happen to me. If you stay with me long enough, maybe I'll tell you about some of them. But I deal with them myself. I don't need a shoulder to cry on, a knight to rescue me, or a man to make me happy. This is who I am. I like her. And you better like her, too. So, you still interested in me? Baggage and all? Of course. Everyone comes with baggage, Ash. The trick is finding a match set. <laughs> That's awful. Tell me you got that out of a fortune cookie. But hey, once we save the galaxy, maybe the Alliance will get its act together. Start acting like an actual government. The Alliance isn't perfect, but it does well enough. 
Have to disagree with you there, Skipper. Giving aliens the run of our most advanced ship? Kowtowing to the Council? The Alliance should be able to stand on its own. We can't. Yet. Why not learn from the races who've been standing for the last thousand years? How can you say that, given everything we've seen out here? They're already acting like Saren is our problem, already sicking us on the bear. The Council races will always think of themselves first. It's... human nature. We can't afford to trust them, not if the survival of humanity is on the line. And here... Here is when you can finally... Finally try to convince um, Ashley that her ideals are good in nature, but they are extremely xenophobic, and you can actually have a huge turning point on her. Ash, you believe in God, an infallible, all-knowing creator with a plan for the universe. You think the diversity of views in the galaxy wasn't part of that? I don't know what God intends, Shepard. I don't think humans have some divine mandate, if that's what you mean. I don't think we're superior. And that's why we need a balance. Humans are aggressive. We think fast, we move fast. Wars have started because of our need for constant progress. The Council can balance that. Well, that's... Huh. I guess I never thought of it that way. All big picture, I mean. It doesn't make what happened to Grandad any better, though. And you're right about that. What happened to your grandfather shouldn't have happened. Well, at least somebody knows that. You and he would have gotten along. He was a tough old bastard. I have a feeling things will come to a head soon. But don't worry, Shepard. I'll protect you. <laughs> What's your opinion on the last mission? You mean the Rachni, right? They were dangerous, Skipper. They proved that 2,000 years ago. I think it was a mistake to let them go. But that wasn't my call to make. It was yours. If you haven't talked to Dr. Tassoni, you probably should. She just lost her mom. That has to hurt. Just saying, Skipper. You see, she does care. We'll talk later, Williams. Looking forward to it, Skipper. Okay. So, yeah, and I do really respect Ashley's character. And honestly, I think her and Femshep have one of the best, healthiest um, friendship relationships there is. And I really do think that what happened to her, or the way that she was treated in her... Um, in her uh, service career isn't right. She's always trying to prove to him. Uh, she's always trying to prove herself that she is the best. She's better than the best. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Before I do any of that, I need to make sure Mike. Ah, okay. Sorry, Ashley. Papa's got to get the uh, best gear first. Oh, I just called myself Papa. I am never doing that again. A little better sniper rifle. Way better sniper rifle. Oh, that's right. I got um, Garrus some new armor. And he can't even wear it yet. But it is better than the armor that I that he is wearing. Oh yeah, um, Ashley, so now we are going to equip you with some better gear. Um, I've been streaming for a bit over an hour, so yeah, I think I should end it now. Um, we'll talk, we'll check on, you know what, no, we have time to check on everyone. Yeah, let's check on everyone. Commander, good to see you. You've been with CSEC a while. Have you seen much action? Well, not as much as you, but yeah, I've seen some interesting things. Oh, I know what this is. I bet you have. Anything in particular that stands out? I remember this Solarian geneticist I was sent to investigate. That case was a bit disturbing. What happened? Why were you investigating them? I was tasked with tracking black market trade on the Citadel. 
Most of it harmless, nothing I needed to pursue. But during the course of my investigation, I noticed an increase in the trade of body parts. Organs, mostly. We usually get a few of those, but not the numbers I was seeing. We weren't sure if there was a new black market lab, or if some freak was harvesting organs from citizens. You've seen this before on the Citadel? Every so often, some lab sells unwanted parts through the black market. But they're not as bad as the psychos. I remember this one Elcor diplomat we caught in my first year on the job. He was hacking people up and selling their organs. Had the station in a bit of a panic. But this case wasn't that clear-cut. Turns out, there was more going on than we first realized. I'm sorry, you said an Elcor diplomat. Elcor, space elephants. With cocky attitude, silly Turian, you have uncovered nothing, and you will never uncover anything. One of those was hacking up people and selling their organs. Okay. So how did you figure out what was happening? First, we got a hold of a sample and ran DNA tests. The weird thing was, the match led us to a Turian who was still alive and was very convinced he'd never lost his liver. After a bit of digging, I discovered this Turian worked briefly for Dr. Salion, the geneticist. So I went to his lab, hoping to find evidence of cloned organ development. But there was nothing. No Salarian hearts, no Turian livers, not one Krogan testicle. Really? You're kidding, right? Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants can increase their virility, counteract the effects of the genophage. It doesn't work, but that doesn't stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 for a full set. Somebody's making a killing out there. And yes, with that bit of information, we realize, we discover that Krogans have four testicles. Hence why they usually say, you got a quad on you, human. What did you do about the geneticist? I brought in some of his employees for interrogation, to see if I could get them to talk. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. Right. Interviewing. You mean threatened? Was that really necessary? Maybe, maybe not. Either way, it paid off. One of my detainees started bleeding profusely during the interview. We offered to patch him up, and he got frantic, freaked out. I ordered a full exam to find out what was going on. Our medics found incisions all over his body. Some of them fresh. That was our big break. These people weren't just Dr. Salion's employees. They were test tubes. Walking, living test tubes. He was growing parts inside these people? Exactly. He cloned their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he harvested them and sold them off. Most of the victims were poor. He'd pay them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Sometimes an organ wouldn't grow properly, so he'd just leave it in them. Most of them were a mess, but only on the inside, hidden, so nobody could see it. And... did you get to do one of your interviews on him? I hope he got what he deserved. That's the worst part. We never caught him. Why not? What the hell happened? He ran, blew his lab, grabbed some of his employees, and headed for the nearest space dock. By the time I found out, his ship was already leaving. He threatened to kill his hostages if we tried to stop him. But you went after him anyway, right? I ordered Citadel Defense to shoot him down, but CSEC headquarters countermanded my order. They were worried about the hostages, worried about civilian casualties if the ship was destroyed so close to the Citadel. I told them those hostages were dead anyway. He just used them to make more organs. But they wouldn't listen. <coughs> Well, unfortunately, they have a point. Well, it's not worth the risk. You pursue the vessel and disable it. That's the best choice. They sent the military after him, but he got away just the same. Yes, they did. I went to Patton and told him what I thought of him and his policies. He said if I didn't like it, I could quit. Well, I almost did. All they had to do was disable that ship, stop him from running. Maybe the hostages die, maybe they don't, but at least we stopped the bastard responsible for it all. That's not how things work. If you don't care about the fate of those hostages, then you're no better than he is. You're just a terrorist with a badge. Yeah, maybe you're right. It doesn't make it any easier, but I see your point. Just wish I could have stopped him. 
that's all. Do you have any idea what happened to Dr. Salion? I sent out feelers from time to time, hoping to find something. I thought I'd found him a while back. He changed ships and changed his name to Dr. Hart, his idea of a joke, I guess. I told the military, but they weren't convinced it was him. I got the transponder frequency for his new ship, but I just can't get anyone to check it out. I'll check out the coordinates when I get a chance. I was hoping you'd say that. But Commander, take me with you when you go. If it's Saleon, I want to be there when you find him. Alright, so that conversation actually lasts a little bit longer than I thought. We're just going to talk to Liara, see how she's doing, and then we'll talk to the rest next time. Because <clears throat> it is getting pretty late for me. And I'm pretty sure I've been streaming for well over an hour now. Yeah, and I gotta trim this down for YouTube, so... So, yeah, not only did you lose your mom today, but the guy you liked didn't, um, also rejected you. Wow, this is not your day, Liara. Commander Shepard, I hope you are not here to check up on me. Yeah, unfortunately I am. I wanted to make sure you were doing okay. I feel a bit embarrassed about what happened earlier. You reached out to me as a friend, and I thought it was something more. The mistake was mine. But I would still like to be friends. Can we just put this whole incident behind us? I won't mention it again. I would appreciate that. Is there something else you wanted to ask me? Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? Benezia was swept up in events beyond her control and lost herself. She fell under the spell of indoctrination and became part of the very thing she wanted to stop. But I will remember and honor how she lived, not how she died. My mother was strong, kind, and beautiful. And now she is gone. Are you going to be okay? You are kind to ask, Shepard. I do miss her. And I grieve for what happened to her. But I will not let my grief interfere with what we are trying to accomplish. I like talking with you, Liara. No matter what the subject. Then let us talk about you. Are you okay? I'm not sleeping well. The visions keep me up at night. I wish there was something I could do to help you. You need to be at your best, Commander. The crew relies on you for leadership. It can be a heavy burden. Oh, being a leader isn't really that hard. I can handle the responsibility of command. But if I don't stop Saren, the entire galaxy gets wiped out. I'm sorry, Commander. The last thing you need is someone constantly reminding you of how grim things are. Is there anything else you would rather talk about? Not right now. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. If you are here to talk about Benezia's death, you need not bother. She brought it upon herself. Don't pretend it doesn't bother you. She was your mother. She was. But she was not. I prefer to remember Benezia as she used to be. Before she was corrupted by Sovereign's power. The best of your mother lives on in you. Her determination. Her intelligence. Her strength. That is kind of you to say. I appreciate your concern, but I am fine. Benezia chose her path, just as I have chosen mine. I am with you until the end, Shepard. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Well, I'm glad she's doing okay. <clears throat> A little interesting that she chose to talk about me rejecting her first and then her mother's death, but I think it's the way the game goes with prioritizing certain conversation uh, topics. Well, <clears throat> that was an interesting conversation. Um, in the next installment, We'll be finishing our rounds and talking to more crew members, because I'm pretty sure I'm about to get Rex's personal mission, as well as um, as well as uh, Garrus's. And we'll continue doing a few side missions before we continue on with the story. Um, however, I think the council is about to tell us that there is another story mission that we need to do. Uh, because like I said, if I focused on the story missions, there's literally three main story missions with getting Liara, 
uh, going to Novaria and doing Pharos, and then there is the next one that the council will send us, and then it'll be uh, the final mission. And there's still plenty of side missions that I need to do. So in the next installment, I'm probably going to be focusing on main, or sorry, um, side missions, and I do apologize that that will be boring, but it is what it is. Anyway, I have the next Fox One. You guys have been great. And I'll see you in the next one. With that being said, have an awesome night.